cool. Good morning. Great to, uh, great to be with you. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, no more hiding my Talofa. Talofa love you. Very good. All right. Good. Shalom. Yeah, bonjour. Konnichiwa. Hola. Mm, very good. Very good. That, um, well, I like that little clip that kind of gives us an idea of where we're going uh, for this series. And uh, I liked it. You weren't sure about the music, eh? But hearing it in the person, you like kind of got your groove on there. Yeah, all right. Very good. <laughs> I am not going to dance to that, no. Uh, but uh, we, uh, as a church, God's taking us on this journey of, uh, to, you know, to see God move. That's our heart's cry. It's our heart's desire to lean into that space, which is sometimes surprising when we start praying. Uh, uh, you know, leaning into the Spirit of God. God, we want to see you move. Often the first thing that the Spirit of God does when we begin to pray and ask and allow God to desire to allow God to move in our lives is He starts working on the inner workings of our lives. Have you noticed that? And so we're like, oh man, God, Spirit of God, move. And He starts bringing up stuff in our lives. And we're like, no, that's not what we meant. And He's like, I know, that's what you need. Okay, God, let's go. And so don't be surprised in the course of the year that God lovingly and kindly begins to work on our internal areas of our life. Uh, but we, we um, as part of this journey now, we've taken time to, to kind of paint a little bit more of a picture. Now I want to talk about prayer, because if we want to see God move, then we have to grow in this place and the place of prayer, becoming people of prayer, right? Which is a nervous topic to talk about, isn't it? Because how many of you here feel like you have got prayer nailed? Like you are all, wow, room for growth. Okay, let's talk about it. But that's, that tends to be what happens instead of going, oh, this is encouraging and exciting and let's all get to church because we're talking about prayer. It's kind of like, oh, I feel nervous. I feel like I'm just going to feel worse about myself and more condemned about my prayer life, right? Wrong. You're going to be inspired. You're going to be encouraged as we look at this topic and we're going to grow together. So how many of you are okay for us to grow together? So we're going to look at prayer. Now, we're not just going to talk about prayer. We're going to set some, every, every Sunday, I'll, I'll set some very practical prayer uh, examples for you to try, and we'll just try different things, and we're going to seek to grow together. Uh, one of the things we're going to launch some point during this series is a weekly prayer meeting uh, that we want to establish as a, and contend for as a faith community to have regular prayer, more consistent in our context. Um, and, you know, there's going to be weekly so that we know that we're praying and believing for, for breakthrough uh, together weekly. Does that mean I'm, you know, I'm asking you to come weekly? No, 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 no. Come once a month. That'd be amazing. There'd be 30 or 40 people there every month, you know, or if you're really passionate, come every week. That's fine. If you've got space to, that's fine as well. But, uh, but uh, let's just bring it into the context. And with that, part of our prayer environments, because a lot of people come to our prayer meetings and they're a little bit surprised. I thought, you, I thought prayer meetings were just, you just yell at God together you know, for an hour. No, 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 no. Prayer when we come together is beautiful. It's contemplative, it's responsive, it's receiving of God's presence and it's intercessory. And part of our prayer meetings is actually teaching people to pray as we gather to pray. So that's part of uh, what we'll do in our prayer meetings. We'll introduce you to different types of prayer uh, as well. So we're, we're, one of our goals in this season is to strengthen us, our, our, our corporate prayer, our the personal devotional prayer lives. That's what this series is about. Of course, uh, one of our focuses in this season as well, and we'll get to a little bit later in the year, is evangelism and outreach. Uh, we we deeply com- committed to the advancing of the gospel in our generation. Amen. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of room to grow in this space and come back to uh, being very deeply evangelistic, uh, seeing people come to know Christ. It's, it's, it's a core priority of the church, right? So we want to find our rhythm, find our lane with that. And I know we've kind of uh, wrestled with that over the years and experimented with different ways. And God, I think, is bringing us back to the heart of what that's about for us. And I think one of the things that's it's really important to own in this season when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to outreaches, our one of our deep burdens and passions is for young people. Absolutely. So we're going to lean into that space when it comes to outreach, heavily moving forward. How do we play our part in the next generation coming to know Christ and the love of God? Um, of course, overseas as well, our intent, as we've talked about, is to sometime. I reckon either before the end of this year, probably more likely 2025 to get a team into Africa again. 
Uh, and then we've talked about, and I, I think our goal would be in 2026 is to be in the Ukraine as well. Just keeping these things in front of you. Uh, so I know some people go, oh, we, we, church doesn't do enough of this and doesn't do enough outreach. Well, let me put it to you. What are you doing? Lead the way. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Ready for it. Formation is another big part of our focuses. We're, we're calling people and building lifelong, wholehearted Jesus followers. And then leadership would be part of that as well. Uh, not just for us, but serving the church and becoming healthier. Now, all that said, let's read this morning from Luke chapter 11. Turn to Scripture. We uh, love the Scripture. We are wrestling with Scripture to allow our lives to be built under the authority of Scripture as Jesus, is, as Jesus did. And in Luke chapter 11, we have this incredible um, uh, teaching from Jesus. And this is what we're going to do over the next few weeks. We're really primarily going to look at Jesus' teaching on prayer. Uh, I believe it's going to be encouraging. There's, at some point, we'll get to Paul's teaching on prayer as well, but that probably won't be this series. Uh, all right, let's read it. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through, I think, to about 4. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples to pray. So uh, John, speaking of John the Baptist, had disciples. He was the forerunner. Jesus, he, one of the primary tasks that we see John's role, apart from calling Israel back to nation, is he discipled people in prayer. And people would watch this, observe this, and as Jesus' disciples, so John taught his disciples to pray, Jesus, would you teach us to pray? And he said to them, when you pray, notice he didn't say, if you pray. <laughs> when you pray, say, Father... Now, that right there is outrageous and revolutionary. Uh, and we just skim right over this. This is like, yeah, of course, you know, start with our Father. That's because it's the Our Father, you know, that's what you, just what you do. Well, it's not what you did. And this was new. And this was shocking and revolutionary. And if this doesn't grip our hearts, and by the end of the message, I hope it will, uh, but if it doesn't grip our hearts, I wonder what game are we playing at when we read scripture and it doesn't move us? Anyway. All right, come, moving along. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we also forgive the, everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. I'm going to just pause on that. We're going to come back to this passage of Scripture uh, later in the series. But I'm going to turn as well back to uh, Matthew chapter 26 and read a few verses there. Uh, as well. And uh, I, I, uh, I have an increased stirring to call the church to prayer. And it's, it's, it's something that God is doing. In fact, I was, I was at a meeting last uh, week uh, before Easter. So everything's a blur now since Easter, isn't it? Um, just me? Okay. Yeah. By the way, Easter camp was amazing. And you all should come next year as helpers and leaders. It, uh, it'd be fun. And then um, also here was amazing too. Friday, our first Friday gathering, which had a lot of people turned up for it. I thought it would just be us and the team because we'd never done it before. And you never know, but it was, a, it was beautiful. And then Easter, Resurrection Sunday, powerful time. Anyway, the Thursday before Easter, I went to a meeting uh, with some people from 24-7 Prayer, which is starting a bit of a national prayer network. Uh, and it was beautiful and talked about the idea of uh, leading into Pentecost, calling the churches in Christchurch to 10 days of prayer, 24-7-hour uh, prayer, and would a ch churches own a 24-hour window in that so that the whole city is prayed for for every 10 days, 24-7, before the day of Pentecost, believe for any fresh outpouring of the Spirit. And I said, I reckon we'd be keen to own a 24-hour period, would you? Particularly like the 2 to 3 a.m. I reckon I'll sign up for that. <laughs> but I won't be alone. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, there's a beautiful, I mentioned that just there's a beautiful stirring in prayer. Beautiful stirring in prayer across Aotearoa at the moment. Uh, Matthew 26, 38 uh, through to 41. Uh, this is just a few scriptures out of Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he said to him, because he goes back to his disciples, he says, My soul is overwhelmed to sorrow at the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, 
Now, now by the way, when you see in, in, in Scripture, keep watch with me, uh, that's not just, you know, that's pray. Pray with me. That's, that's kind of the context here. Um, uh, my so- where, where was I? Going a little farther. <laughs> Verse 39, thank you. He fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but your will be done. Now, right there, Jesus gives us the essence of true prayer. True prayer is about opening our life to the will of God. I haven't got time to unpack that today. Verse 40. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Now, we've talked about being asleep this year already, haven't we? Wake up. Wake up to the purpose of God. So, it's, you know, let's, let's have another look at that. Couldn't you, uh, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, our series is Lord Teach Us to Pray or Lead, Lord Teach Me to Pray. And I'm going to talk this morning about the battle of prayer, the battle of prayer. And I just want to pray for a moment. I just want us to still our hearts in a moment of silence and invite God to speak to us today, inform us today. Invite the Spirit of God to speak to you. And then I want us to pray this prayer together. Lord, teach me to pray. Can we do that? You ready? Here we go. Lord, teach me to pray. Amen. How good was that? Imagine the prayer life of Jesus for a moment. Imagine the beauty. Imagine witnessing it. Imagine being an observer. There you are. In the garden, and Jesus is troubled and sorrowed. And what does he do? Teaching us a whole lot of things about prayer. What does Jesus do with his burdened heart? He falls on his face and begins to pray to the Father. He's wrestling in prayer. He's he's given us an example of what we should do with the burdens of our hearts and the trouble of our lives and the sorrow. And there's a beautiful connection, but it's not just there. If you read the Gospels, and we'll we'll take time to to look through some more snapshots of of Jesus' prayer life, but sometimes he prayed overnight, he prayed all night, and then he has a prayer time, and he went to a certain place and prayed, and then he withdrew to spend time. So there's there's this beautiful compassion of Jesus towards people, and then a drawing away to be with the Father and the Spirit. And then he spends time in prayer and he comes back and appoints the apostles and says, so there's this, there's this leadership aspect to Jesus' life that he hears from the Father and led by the Spirit. And then he goes and, and, then, he, and then there's these beautiful things. He says, like, I only do the things I see the Father doing. So there's this beautiful intimacy with the Father and with the Spirit that Jesus is giving us this incredible example to all the time. Have you ever thought about how amazing the prayer life of Jesus is and was and is still as he intercedes for us? Beautiful prayer life, powerful prayer life. How many of you have ever gone a next step and thought, well, if that's the prayer life of Jesus, clearly that's what my prayer life should be like? Because that's the obvious conclusion. Because Jesus shows us the new humanity. Humanity at his best, his model, his example of how he did his life is an invitation to all humanity and say, the intimacy I had with my father is the same intimacy that you're supposed to have with the father. The same sensitivity to the spirit that I had is the same sensitivity to the spirit that you get to have. Beautiful. So we are supposed to look at the prayer life of Jesus and say, that's the kind of prayer life I'm invited into. Huh? How amazing. How many of you, that's your current reality? <laughs> this, so there's this, this, this challenge. Now, come on. Uh, turn, actually, maybe just take a moment. Take, turn to your neighbor and ask them what they find the most difficult thing about prayer. Can you do that for a moment? Do that for a moment. Let's, let's, just, let's just get real with each other. Uh, if you're not sitting with anybody, just journal it. What's the most difficult thing you find about prayer? Right. 
Well, I would love to. That's, that's all you get for now. You can carry on that conversation afterwards. Oh, you got louder. You want to keep this conversation going. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll give you 20 more seconds. And stop. All right, pick that up afterwards. So, so we find prayer challenging, and, and for good reason. I'm going to explore some of this this morning, but I just want to make four observations from these passages of Scripture uh, that should encourage us. And my prayer and hope is that you get a, a, a sense of inspiration uh, from God as we look at prayer and your prayer life begins to take on a whole new lease of life. As we look at the invitation of Jesus, His prayer life with the Father is the, is, is the beautiful opportunity that we have for a prayer life with the Father. First point I want to make, first observation, when it comes to prayer, we're all rookies. Can I just say that? Can I just throw it out there? Now, I, uh, I, I uh, gave my life to Jesus 29 years ago. Uh, and I, at that time, I heard people pray like it was something they enjoyed doing. And I, I've been around prayer all my life. As a kid, I'd heard people pray, and I'm like, well, you know, it's just something you do. I didn't actually for a moment think it was enjoyable or it was relational or connection, and, and, and I began to come around people that, that enjoyed prayer. And so that was it. I'm like, I've got to, I don't understand this, so I've got to go on this journey of learning about prayer. And so I went to Bible college. I just thought that was what you do to learn about prayer. Prayer, go to Bible college. I'm going to make it easier here at Revolution. We've started a school of prayer, so you don't have to go away to Bible college. Uh, well, you can if you want to. That's fine, too. I went north of Auckland at Snells Beach, and that was a beautiful transformational place. But my, my hunger was not to, to learn to, to do this. My hunger was to learn because I wanted to connect with God. And, and, and I can say honestly say 29 years later, I'm still at the beginning of my journey of learning about prayer. I, 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 I don't feel like I've got it all sorted. There's beautiful parts. There's parts where I would say uh, I want to learn and I want to grow in. Uh, but I, I just think I want to start here on this idea, and this, does, this is not my idea, but this is this idea from a, a woman, St. Teresa of Avila, which uh, if anybody has ever heard anything about the love of God transforming you, chances are it actually came from her writings and her encounters and sort of filtered through. A lot of people wouldn't even know that, but uh, she brought this emphasis back to the church a few hundred years ago. And she said it like this. She said, we're all beginners when it comes to pray. And here was a woman who spent at least eight hours a day in prayer. We're all, when it, when it comes, we're all beginners when it comes to prayer. And, and I just want to frame it like that so that none of us, firstly, get too egotistical. Oh, I've arrived. <laughs> have you? Uh, but that was no one's problem here because no one put up their hand. And if you'd arrived, you would have put up your hand before and asked that question. No one did. So, okay, we, we can move on from that. Uh, uh, but I also want us to, to remove ourselves from this idea that if, if it's not all amazing instantly, then, then it's not... I haven't learned to pray, it's that there's something wrong with me and I guess I'm just not a prayer. Which is one of the lies that the devil loves to strike people. I'm not a person of prayer, it's just not my personality. Which cannot and does not align with Scripture at all. Well, I think I'm probably going to need to unpack that next, next week a little bit more, aren't I? But comparison, these ideas that we, we compare ourselves. So, so let's just pull all that back and just say, well, we're all rookies and we're all learning. That's a good place. That's a healthy place. That's a place of humility. Now, these guys, the disciples, let's come back to our first scripture. They had been watching Jesus. He prayed and then he finished praying. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, these people weren't what we would consider rookies, but they consider themselves rookies. What I mean by that is that they were Jewish and they were male. Now, there's, there's a cultural context here, which is, uh, which is we're not going get, to get into today. But if you understand Jewish context and how they educated their boys, they would have been taught from an early age to pray. And they would have prayed a minimum of three times a day. They would have had three times a day set prayers, all of these people. Probably more likely five, five times a day. Jesus would have done the same. Jesus would have had a set rhythm of three times a minimum prayer because he was Jewish. Uh, and that's just the, that was their culture, that was their context. And so these people had grown up with prayer and they had been praying at least three times a day, maybe five times a day since they could remember. And yet they look at the life of Jesus and they go, Oh, Lord, teach us to pray. 
Now, they'd, they'd, they'd seen Jesus' prayer life for probably here a year, maybe two years. They'd watched it and they're still going, oh, we don't get it. Teach us to pray. It is a good thing to see yourself as a rookie when it comes to prayer. If you resist the voice of condemnation and say, well, if I haven't got it now, I'll never get it. And listen to the voice of the Spirit and say, come with me in an adventure of learning to pray. Second point I want to make is that we will have to contend for a deep life of prayer or a deep prayer life. Now, this is why I wanted to read Matthew chapter 26. And can we, can we just bring those verses back up? Oh, actually, let's give us our second point, if that's all right. And then we'll come back to Matthew 26. There you go. We have to contend for a deep life of prayer. Can we just bring Matthew 26 back up again, please? Uh, let's go to the last part of it. Oh, look at that. I used, used the new revised standard version, the scholarly standard for scripture references. Uh, normally, I read from the NIV, the North Island version. Um, whoa, revival. Um, stay awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial, for the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus is giving us an indication here to the reality that it is not easy to learn to pray and to be faithful when it comes to being people of prayer. Now, he's giving us here one specific uh, dimension, if you like, uh, of the challenge for prayer. And he's talking about your struggle with the flesh is, is, is going to be a very real challenge. Uh, now, uh, just a quick recap, but before I get there, um, <laughs> don't make a decision during this series saying, right, my prayer life is going to a whole new level. I mean, make that decision. Uh, but, but don't make it and then go, uh, it's all going to be easy because I decided it's going to be easy and I'm going to have a great prayer life, so it's just... It's all going to fall into place. <laughs> mm, 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 hard to know what exactly to say to you because everyone's journey is going to be different. But if you genuinely get a conviction that God is stirring you to grow and develop your prayer life, ch ch chances are it won't be that easy. You're like, you're, all right, I'm going to get up in the morning like 15 minutes earlier and have first 15 with Jesus. I'm just going to do it. And you'll set your alarm and you're like, woo, first morning. Sleep right through it, probably. Or if you get up, fall back to sleep. You know what I mean? These are the, these are the challenges. Why? Because Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, now the whole worldview, I haven't got time to take, take you on this journey, but the, there's really the Bible time and time again in the New Testament says we've got three uh, areas where obstacles come from in terms of, and they kind of all interlace as far as living the life that Jesus wants us to live. And it's the devil, the, f the world, and the flesh. The devil. So there's this idea that there's this intelligence working in the background to, to hold us back from uh, God's best for our life. The world is not talking about uh, the world as in people, but the world system, which would be influenced by this intelligence that's pulling us away from the purpose of God. Has anybody ever felt anything about culture trying to pull you away from God's best for your life? Oh, we know what we're talking about. Okay. And then the flesh, and that is this internal reality. Now, the word flesh there in the New Testament is the word sarx, S-A-R-X. Got to be careful with that word if you're in Australia. Don't you hear that? Um, that sucks. No? All right, just me. Okay, sorry. Um, um, it, 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 now, it, it literally means flesh, like muscle and skin. Uh, but that's not how it's, and that's how it was used. But Jesus begins to use it differently, and then the, the, the New Testament writers write it differently as well. And they talk about uh, Sarx, the flesh, as being any part of our lives or our full being that is not led by the Spirit of God. That's the definition Paul's going to give it. Our flesh is this part of our life, any desire in our life that is not oriented or submitted to the leadership of the Spirit, which could be all parts of our being, right? <laughs> and it's kind of hinting at why... Prayer can be a challenge for us because a life in the Spirit is a life that longs to pray. All right, just throw that out there and see how we do with that. Here's the point I want to make with this, and I'm going to move on to two other things really quickly. Firstly, I want to say this. 
we're not going to go out of here and try and have a strong prayer life because that's not going to work. We're going to go out of here and train to have a strong prayer life because we've got this flesh to work against. And your body, let's just purely physically, your body, if you make a decision today, I'm going to go and run a marathon, chances are your body is not going to be up for going out of here and running a marathon. You don't go and run a marathon. You don't go try to run a marathon. You go and train to run a marathon. I'm going to live a life of prayer. Yes, don't try to live a life of prayer. Train to live a life of prayer. It's different. And it's about realizing that our flesh, the desires that aren't initiated by the Spirit of God, are going to need some work to come in line with. We're right? Because, yes, you're going to set aside some time to pray, and you're going to get up, and you're going to go, this is amazing. I, I just feel so undistracted right now, so focused on you, Jesus. <laughs> Some of you are going to see the washing pile. I won't. I'm so holy. I don't see the washing pile. <laughs> oh, glad Amy's not here for this message. Uh, she's speaking this morning in Monaco in your life uh, and sends her love, by the way. Uh, anyway, she's been up there at a youth camp for the weekend. So we train, we train ourselves. We're going to unpack that as we go along. Third thing, pray on the way and make time just to pray. Now, this is probably my key point that I want us to take away this morning. Pray on the way and make time just to pray. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because when it comes to the conversations I have with people about prayer, one of the biggest obstacles I find to growing their prayer life is they just go, oh, yeah, I pray. When I'm out and about, I just pray when I'm on the way. Great. And I don't want to minimize that or stop you doing that. But with the example of Jesus, it's not all you need. When he had finished praying, what does that tell us? This is Luke 11. What does that tell us? Jesus had dedicated time just for prayer. I want to challenge us with that reality. Not to the detriment of not spending time with Jesus on the way. Let, let's bring it back up. Let's, 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 let's see it. Uh, Luke chapter... Uh, can we go back to chapter, Luke chapter 11 for me? I'm getting you guys to jump all over the show this morning. Thank you so much. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place when he had finished. What does that tell you about Jesus' prayer life? He had dedicated time just for prayer. Now... I, I, I'm, I'm, my point is, I'm arguing for both. I'm arguing for both. Like uh, one of the, some of the richest times, uh, and and you know, for Amy and I getting on the same page is we're driving and we're talking about, you know, we're talking, we're talking, you know, about, but we're driving, so we're talking, you know, that's great. But I tell you what, if that's all our relationship had, we're in trouble. What about the times when she is my whole focus? That's what this dedicated time of prayer is. Jesus is our whole focus. I'm going to challenge us, I'm going to encourage us to figure out how to set time in our day just for prayer. I'm making the case this morning that that's the example of Jesus. And we're Jesus followers. <laughs> what about pray without ceasing? Mm, what about that? When he had finished. Hmm, that tells me that there's at least two different types of prayer. There's a prayer when my spirit is in constant communion, which is all the time. Actually, I've got a fun story to tell you about the day that I managed to do that uh, a long time ago. Anyway, uh, and then I reevaluated what it actually was because it was probably quite dangerous. Um, and again, my point is, and time just to pray. And I want to encourage us to be people to, who pray on the way and make time just to pray because it's both. In other words, designate a time, designate a place, work on <laughs> removing distractions, prepare a launch pad, and, uh, and pray. Now, 
some of you are going to be thinking, so let me just share this quickly. Uh, what do I do if I'm going to set aside some time to pray? Well, there's a whole lot of things we'll talk about. Come to prayer school. Uh, if you can make it, we'll just do one of those uh, 15 people at a time because discussion is really important. There's other things that we're going to point you in the direction of. But today, let me just give you one prayer pattern that I learned a long time ago, and I would still pray this on a regular basis, and it's the pray prayer pattern, P-R-A-Y. And let's just throw this up here. If you're setting aside 10 or 15 minutes maybe to prayer on a daily basis, why don't you try this? Start with praise. What will I thank God for? Move on to repentance. What areas of my heart need to turn back to God? Uh, ask what things do I, does God want me to bring before him? And then yield. What's on God's heart for me? Just a little prayer pen to get you started, a little launch pad. Try that. All right, which brings me to my last point this morning. You are right out there? How are we doing? Are we ready to go to a new place in prayer? As a church, that was not convincing. Are we ready to grow in our prayer lives? Uh, there's a big, big questions about setting aside time. Let's, let's talk about that over the next few weeks. I'll get some people to share what works for them. It's going to be different. For, I'm, I'm a morning person. I've got to start my day in prayer. Um, I'm a miserable person if I don't, by the way. Um, but you know for some people it's the end of the day middle of the day oh, I don't I'm, that actually doesn't bond me let's not compare ourselves to each other let's just figure out what does it look like to actually set aside time in a day to be with God be aware of be attentive to uh, which leads me to my last observation just quickly and I alluded to this at the start the outrageous foundation of prayer the outrageous. Can I just finish on this? That first, when Jesus says, so when you pray, pray this, Father. Now that was mind-blowing for the early disciples. Why? You don't call God Father? No, no, when you pray, you say God. Well, you don't if you're Jewish. You, I mean, in fact, you don't even say the name of God. They wouldn't even say it. We, we say, you know, in, in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. They wouldn't even say that. Because they just believed it was so pure and so sacred. Uh, it was just they'd spell it in the letters. Uh, which sounds like breath. God's in there. You know, it's beautiful anyway. The names of God. It's another whole series, I guess. At some point. Prayer. And Jesus said. When you pray, say, Father. There's several different ways that you can relate to God. And let me just liken it to there's a couple of different ways you can live in someone's home. You can live in my home by being my child, firstly. That's, that gives you permission to be in my home. You can be my child. Um, another way you can live in my home is if you come and be my boarder. And I will take money for you to be in my home. And you're allowed to be there as long as you pay money. Right? Which actually, I know that's a bit funny, but a lot of people connect with God that way. And prayer is like that. Well, God, I'm coming to you to pay money. And if I pray enough, then I'll be acceptable to you uh, and we're going to be good. Now, you know that if you're a boarder in the kingdom of God, when God doesn't answer your prayer the way you want him to answer and you get upset. You, you actually think that your prayer owes you something. God owes you something because of your prayer. And Jesus flipped it all on its head and said, you've got to understand that prayer is on the basis that because of my work, because of my life, because of my sacrifice, you get to be the children of God. And the relationship that I had with the Father, I now give to you. And so when you pray, go straight on in. Dad, Father, right? Because that was his prayer. Every time he prayed, Father, forgive them for they know what, know what they do. Every time you see Jesus praying, he's praying, Father. First time in all of Jewish history, someone dared to have a prayer life that said, Father. Until that moment on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did it change then? Because in that moment, he who knew no sin became sin that we may become the righteousness of God. 
that we may become children of God and say, Father. Which is the basis of an intimate and beautiful prayer life. I was reflecting on this this week and I was thinking, you know, um, the answer to low self-esteem, we struggle with that in society, the answer to low self-esteem is not high self-esteem, which is the world's solution. We've heard that, right? Oh, the people have got low self-esteem. Let's give them high self-esteem, which is going to fail. The reason is because I've got just as, as the same judgments of myself that everybody else have, has of me. And so if I'm getting low self-esteem and worrying about what everybody else says about me, I think the same about me anyway. So I'm just going to still have low self-esteem. And if I don't, if I believe myself that I'm all this, and well, we know what that creates in people. It creates ego. Ego it creates miserable people. The answer to low self-esteem is not high self-esteem. The answer to living for the praise of others is not live, to live for the praise of self. It's to live for the praise of heaven. He esteems me. He loves me. He cares. So daily I need to turn it into a metaphor, if you like. Climb up onto the lap of my dad in heaven. And look at him looking at me in love. So the question is, what will you do this week to grow as a person of prayer? Understanding we're all rookies, we're going to have to contend for this to make time just to pray and remembering the outrageous foundation of prayer. Can I get you to stand to your feet, church? And you, would you pray this after me as, as just a simply a response? Lord, teach me to pray. Well, let's just worship for a moment.